Uh, so goodbye. And that is the, the September 28th town board meeting. And the first thing we have is a public hearing for local law to amend portions of Chapter 74 of the Farmington Town Code entitled Construction of Codes and Uniform. Please take notice that the Farmington Town Board will hold a public hearing on September 28, 2021, at 7 p.m. at the Farmington Town Hall, 1028 Farmington, New York, to consider a proposed local law entitled the Local Law Amendment Portions of Chapter 74 of the Farmington Town Code entitled Construction Codes Uniform and changing the title of said chapter to be known as Chapter 74, Buildings, Fire Codes, and Uniform. Any resident of the town of Farmington shall be entitled to be heard upon this matter at such public hearing. A copy of the draft local law is available for public inspection in person at the town hall or on the town's website. This by resolution of the town board of town Farmington. Thank you, John. So the public hearing is open. Dan, you can give us kind of a brief overview. Yeah, um, this really came about with working with the Farmington Fire Department, um, also with the Fire Marshal, with more uh, commercial buildings coming in. And what we're seeing is a lot of buildings just we can buy through the international code, it just makes it a little stricter, makes them have to come out the fire code a little closer. Also, it gives us um, some access, that's some language that was put in. The NFPA uh, guidelines, um, but their NFPA is not recognized by New York, but it's a standard that's out there across the country. So uh, we're looking at adding that into our local code so that we can enforce it. Uh, a lot of it has to do with fire access, allowing uh, fire department emergency access so that they don't have to break down doors and um, that things are being monitored with uh, either sprinklers or alarm systems. And this all really rotates around commercial buildings. No, I, I, <clears throat> I think that you know we had a regulation that was put out by the Department of State years ago. Uh, the biggest change that we see is that regulation addressed structures and not necessarily buildings. So um, with the need for fire prevention, fire code regulations. Uh, We've adapted this to address buildings here in the town. Okay, good. Uh, anybody in the public here in the room or online interested to speak for or against this public hearing? Any resident online or here want to speak for or against this public hearing? Chapter 74 changes. Town board, any questions? Town board has been furnished the law uh, about two weeks ago ahead of this week's meeting. Hearing nothing else, I close the public hearing. This time, I'd like to call the regular meeting uh, to order and pledge of allegiance. Time to the meeting, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dan. Next thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes uh, for our regular meeting on September 14th and our special meeting on September 21st. So, second. Motion to second. Any comments, questions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next thing we have privilege of the floor, we have uh, Megan Webster here tonight, the Ontario County Soil and Water Conservation District. And this is basically regarding uh, a walkthrough that you did on the drainage issues on Elmwood Drive along with Dan. Yep. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. <clears throat> is here okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. So Dan and I were able to walk the property and meet some of the homeowners that live along the um, um, Excuse me, Elmwood Circle and Mount Nash Drives, and take a look at the overall drainage patterns in the area and concerns over the flow of water. Um, it was brought to my attention from Dan and others. There were concerns about the stormwater pond that's located adjacent to these properties. So we were able to walk along that stormwater pond and then also up to the main road to look at 
the confluence of piping that was going on there and, and what that means for the development in water. Um, overall, I think I'll start from downstream and move up, if that sounds okay. <laughs> um, so what we saw when we first came on the properties is some of the street, the drainage that is located behind the farthest parcel. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of um, woody debris and, and gardening debris placed in the drainage area there. So it's not necessarily flowing as it um, needs to. And further down, my understanding is the highway department has cleaned out that area up, you know, quite close to those property lines. Um, so we walked the stream up from there. Uh, there seems to be, obviously we have the surface flow that is from the, I'll call it like the, the brushy wooded swale that is adjacent to that stormwater pond. And then also there is definitely uh, a, gen, a gradual swale that's on the homeowner's property as well. And um, that is, is general surface water flow. As we looked at the pond itself, and looking at the emergency overflow of that pond that leaves that culvert section, um, based on the amount of rain that we had just a few weeks ago, I think, can't think of the exact date, but it didn't look like that water was um, <coughs> reaching the emergency access. It didn't look like there was any flow through that outlet. So therefore, the stormwater pond is functioning adequately. It doesn't seem um, overwhelmed by the amount of rains that we're having, and that was quite a big storm. I think it was three inches to be decided in the Farmington area. So functioning well. The building of the pond itself may have slightly cut off or constricted flow uh, in a small linear portion. I would say we had said about maybe like 30 to 50 feet really where the berm of the pond may have concentrated flow there a little bit, but it's not redirecting water. Water's getting where it was going anyway. So it's just, it's a slight, change in, in flow pattern, but not amount or concentration. So I don't think that pond is causing any specific concerns there. As we all further towards the road, um, my understanding, and again, I did not take elevations, so I, I did not take any topographic elevation shots to know exact topography of the area. So um, what I saw was that 36 inch that's coming under the road, and my understanding that there are pipes coming into that 36 inch culvert as well. And that's a limiting factor right there for the amount of water that's coming both um, along the road and directly across the road. And so that just with hydraulic loading, it is what it is. I don't think that, I think that area back there is swampy and it is holding water. You're not concentrating water. As far as creating any type of retention there, I don't think it would be that helpful because you don't have a large amount of water coming through there. Um, and, and walking back around, again, over the um, property owner's lands, Dan would have to fill me in on, there was a question about whether there's a drainage easement or not on those properties. Did you determine? So we're, we're still looking into that. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned to the town board this morning, uh, the fisherman surveys for those properties do show a easement there. Okay. We are checking with the county and verifying if those were ever filed. And then we'll move on from there on how we proceed. Okay. Um, but that's where we're at. Okay. Because, you know, one, in, in speaking with the homeowners there, and understanding a few of their concerns, it's obviously um, the amount of water in their backyards and standing water and the amount of flow during times of storm events. Um, we, we did look at the area where the homeowner had put in a, a basically what we have, uh, like a drop inlet that leads to a pipe to the drainage area, which is functioning really well, holding up well. Um, one thing that could be done along that grad, it's basically a grass waterway, is you could put a drainage tile in there to help move the water off of that property and reduce a lot of that standing water, I would say. Um, one gentleman explained his concern about a tree that was in that area. I saw no concern whatsoever with water damaging the tree, having any impact on the health of that pine that was that's there. Okay. So didn't see any concern there. Um, so there are a few fixes right now. Um, as far as maintaining that drainage through the area. 
um, it, it certainly can be cleaned up on some of the lower parcel and improving with a potentially a tile drain or something um, that takes the water off of that grass soil that that property owners could help move water through that area. But overall, um, the area is functioning. And um, if you have any questions. Well, I appreciate that comment. So then I just wanted to follow up because we did have a rain event this past week. Yep, so Don and myself are out there in the middle of a rain event. Uh, it was a Wednesday, I believe. It was two days before I took uh, Megan out there and we, we took some pictures, uh, but all the water was flowing, um, just as Megan described, down the channel way. <laughs> Uh, but the things that we did notice as well were uh, there was some debris of grass clippings uh, towards that last property owner, which was blocking some of the water flow before it could get to where Don had already went and cleaned up. Uh, so we did have some backup there, but everywhere else, everything was flowing. We also went up uh, along town line and looked at all the culverts and all the flow of the water up there, and nothing was even close to capacity. And again, from hydraulic loading, I mean, that's going to slow it down to begin with if it ever did get to capacity before it comes down to these homeowners. So, and uh, I believe Don, I don't, I might have seen for him, but he went and checked the stormwater ponds to the south there in the town of Canandaigua, and I believe they were functioning the way they were supposed to. So, that was my next question. We do we need to go up there and look at them and they were uh, pulling as appropriate uh, during the state. Same storm event. Uh, there's an inlet on that little three inch regulated uh, flow. Uh, that water was flowing in there uh, and out, but it was not reaching. There, there's two different outlet uh, segments on that pond, one, one of which gets up into a probably an eight or a 10 inch, and it gets up to one elevation, so it drains just a little bit quicker. And now, of course, you get up to the, the big pipes that the residents are seeing in their backyard. That, that one didn't look like it ever had gotten up to that either. Okay. We only have one resident tonight. Do you, do you have any questions for Megan or for our staff? No. Um, and I, you know, I was one of the people who met with them that day in the, in the backyard. And uh, um, I guess uh, nothing much more to say other than I appreciate everybody looking at it seriously and, and thoroughly. and. Um, we'll go from there. No, okay. So, thank you. No, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Any, any questions for Megan? Chad? Yeah. Tom? No, I think we had a, a question, but I mean, that we got the pictures from the, from the walkthrough, and if you look, there's sections where there's almost like mini dams built with large rocks in the drainage. There's an area where there's probably 10 or 15 two by fours laying in the drainage pipe. What looks like an entire year's worth of grass looking dumped in the drainage. And I just want to start identifying why the water started pulling up. I think those are some pretty good places to start. So, like we discussed this morning, if we have, you know, if we have an easement and it's something that we need to go through, then, then we'll go through and clean it and, and we'll clean the whole thing out. And they can... Yeah, and they, and they still got to realize it's flat. So, there's not a lot of Digging, you can do six years ago when we went in there and cleaned that the last property just before the hedgerow where it gets into uh, where I just cleaned recently. Uh, we took a truckload of grass clippings. There is grass clippings right in the middle of the bottom of the swell that Dan has to put it up, but there's also uh, along the bank that um, I would dare to bet there's six years worth of glass, grass clippings that have been dumped there. So I believe it's a, a regular. Uh, Process that this individual dumps grass clippings there, and, and quite frankly, he's the last house in the chain, so he's holding it all back on his neighbors. So, I mean, he took out the fencing and allowed the bank to collapse and filled the whole thing with grass clippings, and now it's a pretty good idea to identify why the water started pooling up and not draining out past the property. And and there is a bit of head cutting in the channel coming through. I mean, there there are you know grade control wise, there are some issues going on there. But if the town did have a drainage easement and didn't want to go and improve that area, you could go in and establish a more consistent grass swale that would be more easily maintained by the homeowners because the 
that drainage area really does um, jump around in there and it does not have a concise channel just <clears throat> south of that parcel. Um, you know, it does really flatten out. So you, you could control it a little better um, if if that was something the town was responsible for and wanted to take on. That uh, that was done about six years ago, Megan, right mm -hmm. there where we're at where the end of the ditch where I came and we put a temporary pipe in there so that I could get a big shovel across the ditch. And we worked up across on the back side of them houses up as far as that opening clearing. We had that all cleared. Uh, where the one pipe comes in from the road, we had a nice salt bank there and all that stuff. Uh, we put a new mesh there and grass and everything. About a week or so later, the gentleman pulled the deep mesh out, threw it out in the gutter, and started putting his grass clippings back. But that said, uh, if we establish the fact that the Clemens Town Board don't have any objections, if we establish that there is, in fact, easements back there, um, my thought process is that I will put my knee back in there again. We'll put a temporary pipe that we can cross that ditch. We'll work our way up as far as we can work to the south, clean that. Address that grass swale and drop a four inch tile underneath that they like at our, at our open ditch up to the north of the, uh, the wood line to assist with any water that hasn't got direct flow. Once we establish that, we do have a distance between there. That's unless the town board objects to that. No, let's just make sure we have an easement to put it in there. And just make sure we stress what needs to be done. If it is in our easement, that it has to be cut clear. So, and one of our attorneys told Ryan today that just a resolution is, is going to be good enough based on what Dan uh, found in the files for every one of those four pieces of property. If it's not filed at the county, we still reached out to the county and asked them to do the research. <clears throat> Okay. Appreciate, appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next segment is uh, any public concerns for the town board? Hearing none, reports of standing committees. Uh, water and sewer uh, down at the treatment plant, or I should say, in the sewer system. <clears throat> Uh, working on some design changes to our uh, Wagon Road lift station. Um, flow meters have been moved out of the Grove subdivision and we're just waiting uh, to install them in some new locations. Um, waiting on a quote for uh, one of the pumps, one of the VFD drives on our felt press system down at the plant. Having a little issue with our UV system, an AC unit that uh, is designed to cool the lamps. Uh, having an issue with that right now. And uh, also working on a boiler repair down at the plant and still working on getting quotes uh, for a digester cleanup down at the plant. Um, still waiting, 332 um, water main replacement. Uh, they did a survey, we're waiting on some Wetland delineation for that. Um, Collet Road, uh, the sewer main replacement over there is moving forward. Um, it was good news that the, the pipe, that actually the eight inch pipe is in stock. And Robin reported that the manholes that we ordered, they're thinking they're only a week or two out. So hopefully by next meeting, maybe we can award the labor for that and get that project underway. Um, they're doing a lot of paving down at the treatment plant, so they're working on just cleaning up from that, but that came out very well. Um, and our <clears throat> manhole, our I&I &I, um, manhole spray linings is ongoing, um, but they have repaired some, some much needed manholes to, to reduce some infiltration into the system, and that will be ongoing um, at least the next couple weeks. And just a couple of resolutions. Um, we can talk about the, those when they come up to the agenda. We achieve time of operations. Highway Park. Highway Park. Highway Park. You missed it too much. No, we didn't miss it. I'm trying to use my tablet instead of a paper. So I'm, I'm trying to be breathing here. Um, most of the Highway Park stuff is just ongoing equipment maintenance. Uh, they've been very busy over on Canada with Farmington Town Line Road. I'll let Don kind of 
um, touch on that project. Um, mowers, you know, it's almost October, but the grass is not slowing down any, so mowers are continuing out on town roads. Parks, again, ongoing maintenance, mowing, trimming, um, striping the athletic field, striping crosswalks. And uh, just a resolution tonight um, to purchase a new bulldozer for next year. So, tell them that. There you go. Right. Town operations. I know that. Town operations, but this morning, short meeting. Uh, there are three resolutions. There was a fire call in 96, 96 yesterday. And I'll let Dan talk about that. It's kind of an interesting fire. Uh, the state insurance uh, office will be conducting their rating classification update in November. The comprehensive plan public information meeting is being scheduled for next month, followed by a formal submission to the town board in November. Uh, today, we submitted the TAP grant to the State Department, and it's anticipated in February when they hear something, and hopefully it'll go well. Uh, the Oregon Trail solar power pedestrian and crossing signals are being held up because we're missing components, where they're not able to get some components for these signals, and there's no data as to when they'll arrive. Um, Probably the chips that they're not going to be able to get, which sounds like common to everywhere else. Uh, that's all I have. What was the short read? I'm done. <laughs> and you can go. <laughs> Part of some other town officials, uh, supervisor. Um, at the county level, yesterday I had uh, my public works committee meeting. Today was a special Ways and Means committee meeting. It was the final review of all the departments for the 2022 county tentative budget. Uh, also, our next meeting of the tomorrow's Ways and Means Committee regular meeting. And then next week, uh, October 7th, is the next meeting that I'm involved in with the Special Investigation Committee on the Sheriff's Department uh, Administration. Um, I'll Talk about the preliminary budget after after the town clerk and the finance committee section. Highway parks. Uh, as as Steve mentioned, over in highway, we've been pretty busy over on town line here the last week or two, uh, getting top on all the folks driveways, getting into one of the different for plowing and whatnot. Uh, but we've got all the driveways in there at top. Uh, we went down through yesterday. As a matter of fact, we had quite an operation going with uh, getting a pavement. Uh, it was about 4,000 feet, uh, 32 feet wide, 260 foot lanes. Uh, so we got the binder course on there. Uh, actually, at one point, I got a call from one resident today with concern for the lift getting into his driveway, thinking that that was the final call. But I assured him that next year there's a top lift that goes on there, and that would be he was quite happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy's been over there cleaning up, uh, starting to make it less like a construction zone, getting added uh, extra cones and barrels and signs that, that are no longer needed out of the road over there. Uh, did some touching up on some of the driveways, some of the aprons on people's driveways on the opposite side of the curb, uh, at Stonehead, stuff of that nature. Uh, our intention is, uh, well, uh, Monday, we're going over there. We've got some areas where we've got to do a little bit of shoulder work uh, for safety uh, for the winter. And then on Tuesday, it's our anticipation of our stakeout on the corner of uh, 332. And the candidate department of the town line will be reestablished so that we can put that two by two drain in at the corner and eliminate that pond there. So we anticipate probably Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Thursday gets to clean up there. Uh, then the highway is going to be moving into you know, some continued fall work from, uh, from the roads, some of the areas. We've got some widening to do that uh, sort of for uh, Green Road, Loomis Road, Brownsville, Short Street Road. We have some widening to do. Uh, we got a continued concern with road striping, but uh, I was assured again today that we will get our five miles of black road right now into the state of lead strike. Uh, moving on to the parks, in addition to striping their crosswalks, their athletic fields, their normal uh, plumbing jobs here and there, toilets that don't stop running, stuff of that nature in these buildings. There's always little plugs here and there. Uh, we also managed to 
find enough paint to get uh, parking lots at uh, Hortensia Lodge as well as the town hall here be straight. So, uh, as I quickly got come to the understanding that paint is extremely hard to get in any road market with any suppliers. That's basically where we're at. Good job, thanks. Town clerk. Uh, the preliminary budget was filed with me yesterday. Board members, you have that in front of you right now. And also, our county first meeting is going to be this Thursday at Lincoln Hill Farms. That's it. Nice. Thank you. Water and sewer, Robin. Um, <clears throat> we've been getting some of the maintenance done on the pump stations. Uh, we hired back um, a gentleman that was with us a couple years ago, and that's what he used to do. And now we're getting oil changes done. And, Leaks fixed and all that, so working well. Good news. Yeah. After maybe he gets one slice of or something, and one of the young guys with him too, right? Yeah, Hunter's been going. Okay, good. So um, we got to get time. I'm um, sucking out wet wells before we're. Right. Right. Very good. Planning for building and zoning. Um, yeah, we just, we're still seeing a lot of permits come in with people wanting to get projects done before uh, the weather changes on us. Uh, along with doing that work, we are working on a couple of grants that uh, have been awarded to us. One being the skating grant, uh, trying to get our files boxed up. We're anticipating those to go out in the middle of October. Uh, I do want to thank the clerk's office for helping us with the files that were done on her vault, getting some of those ready for us and sorted. Uh, we still got a little bit more to do down there, but uh, things are good there. Uh, the other grant that I'm working on getting closed out is the charging station grant uh, out at Beaver Creek Park. Hopefully, we, by the end of October, that one will be closed out. And then we're looking at uh, See what we want to apply for. Um, possibly get a scanning grant. They are going to do another round of that next year. Uh, but I think we have to apply by the end of the year. So I'll be getting the board at some point to discuss our options and where we want to go. Because we should be able to finish the building environment, but if we want to do, we could look at other departments as well. Okay. Water and sewer. Planning <laughs> uh, <laughs> board. Certainly, our next meeting is October 6th. Uh, we have a continued public hearing and a preliminary subdivision for the credit union in Farmington Commons, as well as a preliminary site plan for that uh, location. We also have a final site plan for that's been modified for the country max on the corner of. Uh, Cook and Collette, and then a final site plan for the auto wash. And that's it. Division. Mm -hmm. Ryan, director of planning and development. Yes, um, we'd like to report just a little bit more on what Mike said. 428 today, the state acknowledged receipt of our tap grant, um, about 100 pages. Uh, it's a two point Two million dollar grant that we're seeking uh, 1.7 million plus in federal highway monies. Our share is 442,800. The uh, grant provides for 17,000 lineal feet of sidewalks, uh, pedestrian bridge crossing of Beaver Creek, trail connections to the Auburn Trail and intersection improvement there at Potencia and Route 96 to finish the fourth leg of that intersection. Um, I believe we have a good grant. I hope that it gets funded. And I'd like to thank the staff and MRB for all their help in putting all of the various maps and documents together to uh, demonstrate our commitment to sidewalks here in the town. So um, with that, I, I just say thank you to everyone. And Ron, thanks for you, all the work you put in on it. And, and my secretary, Marcy, uh, was collecting all the letters of support and everything for the last six weeks or whatever. So. 15 of them. 15? 
all the way from Senator Schumer to everybody else. And I wasn't going to say who would be at the bottom of that list. Right. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> uh, thanks, Bill, town engineer. Yeah, just a few things. Uh, we will be starting a sewer work plan here shortly, along with Victor uh, for the New York State DEC uh, manhole rehab currently ongoing um, as part of that. Clet Road sewer, um, Steve brought this up. We will work to try to get installation costs by the next board meeting. Uh, so we can keep that moving. Waiting on DOH and DOT on a few water project approvals. Um, all the industrial user permits have been reissued recently um, and updated. And Rickyard Road Tank, which we've been waiting for some time for DOH approval. Uh, we've gotten word that we should see approval within the next week or two on that. So we'll be uh, hopefully having an assembly a bid schedule for the next uh, public works meeting or uh, town board meeting, sir. I'm hoping we also have our joint water meeting that same day so maybe we can get some good news uh that that night that we're going to be able to go out for a bit that'd be good thanks um we have our assessor online tonight michelle hello everyone can you hear me okay oh yeah okay i hope everyone's doing well um <clears throat> so some of you know I've been working from home as a result from a COVID quarantine. Uh, two family members were diagnosed as positive with COVID a few days apart. Um, and so my quarantine date has moved around a bit. Um, but luckily, both of them uh, seem to be coming through it fine. So we're moving forward. Um, they were both fully vaccinated. So some food for thought there, I guess. Um, kind of surprising to me, but. Um, luckily, um, I have not had a, a whole lot of symptoms, which is great, as well as my 86-year-old mom. We are very grateful for that. So um, I plan to be back in the office um, on Friday the 1st um, and have been working remotely otherwise. Um, you know, there are things that come along that will put a little bit of a kink in our plans, but all we can do is put our best foot forward, you know, take stock of the situation and make adjustments where they're needed. Uh, so onward and upward, um, adversity can be turned into opportunity with the right attitude and actions. And that is my goal. Um, I'm sure no one here is immune from setbacks and adversity, uh, no matter what the situation, whether feeling, um, you know, justification or regret. The point is to try and make uh, lemonades out of lemons, so to speak. So that being said, I'm working on um, the commercial land valuations right now, uh, just moving forward with the 2022 reveal, doing the best that I can from home. Um, and uh, Paula's helping out as well with some, um, some inventory cleanup and uh, just putting our best foot forward and making some progress. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Michelle. Anybody have any questions for her? No, oh, thank you. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Uh, nobody for recreation tonight. Uh, just from the finance committee side, um, just go over the 2022 20, budget for the record. Uh, as the town clerk said, uh, I did file it with her office yesterday, and the town board has it today. Um, we're shooting for October 12th to have a public hearing and possibly. Uh, also approve the 2022 budget at that time. But we'll at least get the public hearing out of the way. Um, the general fund appropriations are up for 2022 by 3.7 million. That's due to funds being set aside for capital projects. The highway appropriations funds are up $266,000 from 2021 budget. Revenues in both funds are up significantly and it allows for a decrease of our tax rate from $1.10 per thousand to $1.02 per thousand, which is a 7% reduction. The date drainage district is flat for 2022. The fire district, uh, 
rate is down 4.75%. Water expenses uh, continue uh, you know, to increase and the revenues are flat. Uh, will this wet this year being wet? We haven't sold as much water as we normally do. The tax rate for the water district will be up 6%. Four sidewalk districts are up, two are down, and there is one new sidewalk district. Uh, new for this year in Victor and Farmington is an agreement to help fund additionally the Victor Farmington Ambulance Corps. In our, in our preliminary budget, we have $150,000 in funds of a new tax, which currently would be three, 13, almost 14 cents a thousand of assessed value. The town board between now and the final budget. Um, we can add some VLT money to that to reduce um, that tax rate. And as I mentioned, we're, we're shooting for the public hearing on October 12th. Uh, a couple other additions that I wanted to bring uh, for changes between the time of the budget and the preliminary budget. We added more money to the attorney line, hard to believe. <laughs> Uh, we did decrease the ambulance line from what we originally said to the 150,000 I just mentioned. And I take my lunch every once in a while in one of our parks, and, and most recently Beaver Creek Park. And even though we added one additional parks personnel in the time of the budget, um, I went forward and added another person six months, June, July timeframe on for 2022 for parks personnel. I just, I'm looking up there and you're not going to get it done. <clears throat> so you're, you're got an extra body come the end of next year. Um, the highway department, we put back an additional $80,000. For, an, for another project, and we added $54,000 to the Commons Way extension, which goes to the, the property line at Pathways Corners. The fire departments are going to be surprised because we gave them all 4% across the board increase. And still, our tax rate went down by 4.75%. So we, we wanted, when we can, we wanted to help out. The fire departments and the water department. We did add one project, um, would be the material for Mertensia and Clap Road project. If the town home project uh, gets approved and goes forward, uh, they've agreed to put the pipe in and we buy the materials. So we did add the materials into the budget. And that's all I got in the finance side. Any questions? Communications are on file. Reports and minutes are on file. First resolution is setting the public hearing for the 2022 town budget for Tuesday, October 12th at 7 p.m. at the Farmington Town Hall and this location, of course. So we'll second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two is a resolution establishing and directing line of credit for the villas at Halfway's Corners, phase 1CA, in the total amount of $637,807.37. Second. Second. Motion by Mike, second by Ron. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three is a resolution authorizing acceptance of easements from Cynthia Ciccarelli, Chick and it requires a roll call vote. Yeah. So moved. Okay. Motion to second. We'll call vote. Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Aye. Aye. Thank you. Or is resolution authorizing the town justice apply for a justice court action plan grant in the amount of seven hundred and twenty-eight dollars and eighty-two cents? All second. And uh, this is probably the lowest amount in the past four in quite a few years. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
surplus and dispose of appropriately in the highway department. So, so second. Motion to second. This would be for their 1999 Caterpillar bulldozer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six is resolution authorizing the last day of payment for all 2021 third quarter water and sewer services located within the Canada Farmington Water and Sewer District and the Victor Sewer District accounts as of November 1st, 2021. So, second. Motion to second. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Seven is a confirmed resolution authorizing Rural Brothers to do a directional drill of rock and install a new water service at 4628 Route 96. So moved. Second. Motion to a second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Eight is a resolution authorizing the establishment of the Town Hall Upgrades Capital Project. So moved. Motion in a second. Um, so this is for the downstairs portion of the town hall. We've already had a ballot come in, excuse me, Fisher's Associate, come in, and they're going to give us a quote for preparation for the remaining asbestos that's down there. And that will be our first part of the project. And then we we'll want to totally revamp the bathrooms down there and uh, you know, paint on some of the rooms that haven't been painted and, and whatnot, especially the courtroom. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nine's resolution authorizing a budget amendment transferring money from the sewage treatment personnel line to the sewage treatment personnel overtime line in the amount of eight thousand dollars. So motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ten's resolution authorizing a budget amendment transferring money from the Farmbrook White to Farmbrook. Our farm brook lighting bulb replacement and farm brook lighting pole replacement in the amount of four thousand dollars. So second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Eleven is a resolution adopting the final draft of local law number 16 of 2021, providing the amendments to the portions of chapter 74 of the Farmington Town Code. Entitled Construction Codes, Uniforms, and Creating a New Title for said chapter to read Chapter 74 Buildings and Fire Codes Uniform. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. This was the public hearing we talked about earlier tonight. All in favor? Aye. 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 12 is a resolution authorizing the Highway Park Superintendent to purchase a 2021 D3. Calico with bulldozer with extended coverage at a cost not to exceed one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So moved. Second. So um, this probably won't be uh, paid for until the first week of January. Uh, we, it is through the N NJPA uh, contract. It's a national contract for the pricing. All in favor? We say five percent by getting it done. Yes, and then we save five percent by doing it before the end of the month. Good point. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thirteen is a resolution authorizing the Highway Park Superintendent. Oop. Thirteen resolution authorizing the town supervisor to apply for lawn mowing charges for properties within the town to the tax roll. So moved. Okay. This is just for two locations: Creek Point and Holly Lane. All in favor? Aye. 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 14 is the abstract number 18 for 2021 to pay the bills. General fund $66,977.51. Highway fund $138,482.32. Beaver Creek Park $98,451.39. Townline capital project $11,065.40. Storm drainage, $1,891.84. Lighting district, $3,439.79. Sewer district, $86,483.86. Water district, $30,562.61. Payroll deductions, $6,634.75. For total abstract, $443,989.47. And a motion is assembled. 
Okay. Motion and a second. Comments, questions, any extensions? All in favor? Aye. 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 No training under $100. Anything for discussion tonight? No executive session scheduled tonight. Any objections to waiver of the rule? Hearing none, we have two resolutions. First one is a resolution authorizing the sale of surplus equipment for the town of Arlington Water and Sewer Department. So moved. Second. That's for their 2007 Kenworth uh, 10 mil tractor. It's got 440,000 miles on it. We actually purchased that used in 2012. And now we're turning around and selling it. And he's got a new one to be delivered. What do you need? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Choose a resolution accepting a two year maintenance bond for Sundrum sales, which is Burn Dairy, for newly constructed sidewalks at 6215 State Route 96, the total amount of $4,345. So, second. Motion to second. <coughs> Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else to be brought to this board? All right, our next meeting is on the 12th. Reminder, we meet at 6 p.m. with the joint water meeting with the town of Hopewell and the town of Canandaigua, and then our regular meeting is at 7 o'clock. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Fine. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right.